Hello everyone, it's Angela and welcome back to my channel. Today it will be a little bit different video, so you will see the paper I delivered at the conference of the British Association for the Study of Religions uh, at Leeds Trinity University. So the paper is on the impact of social media on um, shamanism and folk magic in Italy. Hope you like the video and if you do, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for all the academic fun. I will leave you to my paper. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Bye! Today I will talk to you about the impact of social media on Italian shamanism and folk magic. So the research questions that I'm going to address in today's paper are Has the use of social media redefined shamanism within the community of practitioners? And have folk magic and its traditions been reshaped by the internet? So spoiler alert, the answer to both questions is yes. But we will see why and how that is. So first of all, uh, my methodology is of course based on my doctoral research, so this is part of a wider project. So uh, the data that I'm using for this paper are drawn from three years of field study, um, from using participant observation, interviews, questionnaires, and casual conversations. But of course, for these particular papers, what matter the most is that these courses emerge from uh, a Facebook community that I created for, the specific, for this specific purpose, for this specific study, well, for my doctoral research. And also textbooks, articles, and internet posts that are produced within the community will be also part of um, yeah, where I draw the information from. So the Facebook group is I created this Facebook group in October 2016, so when I was basically just starting my PhD. And the um, uh, Facebook group is called Practitioners of Shamanism in Italy. Of course, in Italian is Praticanti di Shamanismo in Italia. And the idea was that I was thinking, if I were a practitioner of shamanism, what would I go out and, and search for? And it would be somebody basically in my community find other people who are practicing the same thing that I'm doing, to find other people to share experiences with. So basically one of the rules of this group, which is actually about to, to reach a thousand members, this screenshot is taken from a few days ago, so now uh, they are just about to hit a thousand. So I never invited anyone in this Facebook group. They have to, um, they have to intentionally search for it and there is no advertisement anywhere that I ever shared so that was basically part of my research I think because I wanted to see how many people were actually seeking for um, other people in the same community. Also member when they ask to join in they have to answer a few questions related to their definition of shamanism and whether they consider themselves practitioners of shamanism or not. And also, the interesting thing is that most members practice or are interested in what I would call, the, not just me, but what is usually in the literature called transcultural shamanism, which is a form of shamanism that is not locally based, so it's not linked to any specific place or any specific lineage or tradition, but rather a set of techniques or practices that can be um, basically practiced in Italy or in Britain or in Africa, everywhere basically. So they are not linked to a specific tradition or to a specific place. So yeah, the group has hosted many, many discussions, polls, even event advertisements and they share experiences. Sometimes they even share the, their dreams, asking other people to help them understand what the, the dream might mean. So, yeah, what emerged from this Facebook group? And not just, I don't think that the Facebook group has just let this emerge, but also has somehow created this in the community, which is that what I say here, shamanism is in the perception of the beholder. 
meaning that basically sometimes there are discussions that arise from in this Facebook group and there are the bad guys and the good guys. So the bad guys are the purists who say you are only allowed to say that you are doing shamanism if you are initiated in a specific tradition, uh, in a bloodline, um, in the Nordic or in the Siberian or in a very specific tradition. And the good guys are those who allow for um, an openness that the purists wouldn't. So the idea that, okay, for you shamanism is this, for me shamanism is something else. So what happens here is that shamanism is getting redefined by the community and by the discourses emerge, emerging in the community because what is really emerging is that you are considered by the community, by somebody approachable and somebody who's on, the, on a spiritual path um, if you are open to this kind of eclecticism and, um, of, and also to somehow personalize your practice and your idea of what shamanism is. So also there is an unacknowledged syncretism with neo-paganism. So I find that especially when uh, solstices and equinoxes are approaching, there are uh, advertisements of events like, uh, for example, shamanic sawin or shamanic imbolc and or shamanic winter solstice. And this kind of post tend to be very mm, recurring and very popular. And uh, it seems like these people don't really acknowledge that these uh, eight festivals that they are celebrating as shamanic festivities are actually coming from, from the Wicca tradition and from neo-paganism. So it, it is like the, the knowledge and the, the perception of these festivities has been absorbed somehow and that the, where they're coming from has, has been basically missed. So they don't really acknowledge where they come from, but they feel like those traditions are part of the shamanic experience. So that is also interesting. Also, so basically the perception of shamanism is more fluid and incorporates other New Age practices. So even like Reiki and other forms of um, healing, basically, that uh, can be found in other New Age um, practices and also sometimes they incorporate parts of witchcraft and pagan paganism as I said. So there are also more and more emulations of popular forms of shamanism. So for example the the most uh, popular form of shamanism or western shamanism in the west is core shamanism which was created by Michael Harner who basically gathered the core principle according to him which are in all shamanisms so that Westerners could practice shamanism without having any specific link to any specific tradition. So uh, this has been, um, now there's the Foundation for Shamanic Studies was a set of workshops that guide you through your basically sort of uh, initiation to a process of following these workshops and learning how to perform this shamanic practice. So now even those who are not really affiliated with the Foundation for Shamanic Studies they go to a seminar, for, for example, to a workshop, and they start creating their own. So it is very easy for uh, these practitioners to uh, go from being a student to a teacher in the time lapse of a, of a workshop, basically. So that is also something very interesting, and it happens quite often that people tend to become the, the leaders of their own community in a very um, short amount of time. So, yeah, another interesting fact is that uh, what social media creates is a sort of a popularity contest where um, the more you're popular, the more your posts are popular, the more validated you are as a shamanic practitioner. And this is clearly something that uh, is affecting the community because, of course, the more likes you have, the more somebody might come to you to learn how to perform a shamanic ritual or to know what shamanism is. So yeah, that is interesting and it is clearly something that is affecting transcultural shamanism through social media. So now let's talk about folk magic. Folk magic in Italy is quite widespread, although 
still quite underground and I'm um, systematizing folk, sh folk uh, magic in Italy in my uh, doctoral thesis and I'm uh, labeling it as the tradition of segnature. The reason for this is that the core aspect, the core practice in folk magic in Italy across the different regions and the variations that you can find is the use of these gestures accompanied with prayers which are, which are called segnature. Um, and yeah, these are the most uh, popular, the three most popular Facebook groups. I'm using Facebook specifically um, as, as an example because it is uh, the most popular social media platform in Italy. So even older people tend to use Facebook and other social media tend to be not as used uh, in Italy as Facebook. So yeah, these are the three most popular Facebook groups and they gather, as you can see, quite a few members. And um, yeah, these are close groups, but it's very easy to us to join in and um, yeah, and be part of these groups. So what happens here? Basically, there is um, a significant divide created by social media between older generation and younger generation. So the older generation in folk magic traditions in Italy tend to be very um, related to their own family bloodline. So only if you are a family member, you can be initiated. You can only be initiated on Christmas Eve, only with a certain procedure. There are, there are only certain gestures that your bloodline possesses and you can have um, as a consequence. Whereas, uh, thanks to social media, thanks to these Facebook groups, now it's changing quite rapidly. So it means that now you don't need to be um, in a certain bloodline to be initiated. You can be initiated online, basically. And uh, although there, there are certain traditions that are maintained, so for example, there is one of these groups where the, the leader, the, the person um, who's leading the group, she leaves basically the procedure on how to get the, the, the segnature passed on to you on Christmas Eve for four hours, and then she removes them from the, from the group. So somehow the tradition of Christmas Eve is maintained, but at the same time, the number of people that can be initiated is much more, it's quite extended. And also another thing that changes is the field of action of segnature. So there are more, um, there are more things that you can treat with the segnature now um, compared to the tradition and the older generation. And also, uh, although in the, according to the older generation, you only can have the segnature that are linked to your bloodline. So for example, if, I, if my grandmother was able to remove the evil eye, the only thing that I would be able to do is remove the evil eye. Now, I, if I can remove the evil eye and you can heal herpes, we can exchange segnature and we can both have two instead of one or even five or ten. So there is basically a sharing of these uh, practices and they are helping each other and they are gathering somehow um, more of these um, and uh, they are able also to use them. And I also interviewed quite a few of them and they swear that they work. <laughs> I interviewed a person who now lives in Switzerland and she was initiated online on Christmas Eve and she was swearing to me, I swear to you, they do work, they do work. Because afterwards, I did feel something and I used this segnature to heal a person and it did work to heal actually multiple people. And she, and she yeah, basically was swearing that they, that they worked. So apparently the fact that it happens through an online medium, it, it doesn't really uh, affect the efficacy according to my participants. Also, an important factor is the emergence of a common shared term, which is segnature, basically, because in the past, segnature was only used in this region, the region of Emilia-Romagna, and according to the literature as well. So, but now, whether you talk to somebody in Sicily, or in the north of Italy, or in the center, they understand what segnature are. And in the past, it wasn't like that at all. So basically, every region had either a different name, like for example, in Sardinia, there are still the Brebus, 
in certain regions um, of Sardinia. But if you talk about segnature, now they would understand you. Whereas 20 years ago, that wouldn't be the case. So it is something that has massively changed since um, social media has become a medium for people to talk about these kind of things. And of course, when you talk to people in different regions, you do need a shared term in order to understand each other. Because if I'm from the region Campania and you're from the region um, Friuli uh, or uh, Emilia Romagna, we still need to understand each other. So that is clearly something that the internet has created because the connection created by the internet, which basically allows you to have a community coming from so many different and varied regions and places, create, creates the necessity for you to understand what you're talking about with one term and not several 20 something terms. So, yeah. So my conclusion is that internet and social media have allowed a circulation, a circulation of information never possible before. And what this creates basically is that the wide amount of information gives individual practitioners uh, more, basically more choices to tailor their practice around their personal inclinations. And that is very clear when you uh, read the conversation and the discussions that happen among people, that they really care about the fact that it works for them, that the practice that they are, that they are doing, that the form of shamanism that they are practicing is meaningful to them. And you can have this, you can have a more personalized meaning to the practice when you have more choices. Because if you, were, if, you, if you had lived in a place without the internet, in a secluded area, the only, the only choice you have if you want to practice these kind of things is to follow your tradition, your local tradition, because that's the only information you, it's available to you. But now it's not like that at all. So you have such a wide range of information practices to tap into that you are able to tailor the practice around yourself, your personal inclinations, your personal um, belief system and so on. So you can find people in these communities that are even Catholics or they are pagans or they are spiritual or they are non-religious. So you find really all sorts of belief systems and they still believe that they are practicing shamanism and to them it's just as valuable as well except for the purists but they are the bad guys <laughs> when you when you get to into this kind of um, internet discussions uh, they are portrayed uh, as such so yeah also the definition and manifestation of shamanisms are subject to continuous change and to trends created by social media. So by this I mean that I think there's no coming back from, there's no coming back from this. So I think that social media and the internet are going to influence shamanism and even uh, folk healers more and more over time. And my prediction is that we will see more and more changes and it's going to be uh, more and more difficult for scholars, I think, to define things according to categories and we may need to find <laughs> alternative ways uh, to understand this kind of practice that may go beyond categorizations. So, so yeah, thank you very much for your attention. These are my contact details and also I recently opened a YouTube channel so if you're interested in uh, these kind of topics, magic, witchcraft, shamanism, um, I really appreciate if you um, went and check it out. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, are you the first religious studies YouTuber?
I don't know. <laughs> I hope so, not. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but I might be. <laughs>